Welcome to my YouTube channel Logic Connect. Today's topic is Acute Superative Otitis Media. So what is this Acute Superative Otitis Media? It is an inflammation in this middle ear. So ultimately results in perforation and the pus starts leaking out of it. So this topic will be done under the following heading. The definition, the root of infection, the risk factors, what are the bacteria causing it, pathogenesis and clinical features treatment strategies involved. So what is acute superative otitis media? If you take each word, acute means the sudden or an abrupt onset of a disease. Any disease for that matter will be called as acute. What is it? Superative or separative? This superative means a process of pus forming. Entry of microorganisms into the body is called infection. The defense system of the body, the WBC fighting this infection is called as immunity. Ultimately the resultant is the both the bacteria and the WBCs will die resulting in pus formation. So superiority means a process of pus formation which happens in the middle ear. So this otitis media, media are the people between the politicians and the citizens like that. In our ear we have three parts of the ear, the external ear, the middle ear and the internal ear. So middle ear is actually called as media. Otitis media is the inflammation of the middle ear. So there is an inflammation in this middle ear which will be called as which is of sudden onset and ultimately results in pus formation which is be called as ASOM acute superative otitis media. Normally the middle ear is a cubical chamber which is sandwiched between the external ear and the internal ear to be more specific between the external auditory canal of the external ear and the cochlea of the inner ear. So this tympanic membrane acts as a barrier between the external ear and middle ear. This tympanic membrane normally divided into four quadrants. This is the right tympanic membrane. So if you divide into four quadrants, this is the anterior portion. Here the person's face will be there. Here the back of his skull will be there. This is the upper portion and this is the lower portion. Jaw will be there here. So there will be four quadrants. Anterior superior, posterior superior, anterior inferior, posterior inferior. You can see the handle of malleus. Anterior and posterior malleus are fold. And this anterior inferior quadrant, if you throw a light on this tympanic membrane, it appears pearly white in color and this will be called as a cone of light. So, what are the roots of infection? What is the etiology? What is the cause for this acute superative otitis? The infection can come from various roots. It can come from outside like this if there is a traumatic damage to the tympanic membrane. That is from the external ear it can come. Exterior it can come. It can come from the pharynx. That is the most commonest way to come. Through the eustachian tube it can come through the eustachian tube directly end up in when you, the person is yawning or take, taking a deep breath but time to ventilate the middle ear in addition to that when addition to the ventilation the infection also can travel through that route last but not the least whenever the person is in septicemia when the bacteria is running through his blood blood can travel anywhere so blood vessels will be there around the walls of the middle ear so it can reach the middle ear via the blood stream so it's blood borne infection most commonest route will be from the eustachian tube route. So whenever someone has got a recurrent common cold, upper respiratory tract infection, chronic sinusitis, diphtheria, whooping cough, adenoids that is nasopharyngeal tonsil inflammation especially in pediatric age group, tonsillitis that is palatine tonsil inflammation in the nasopharynx, in the oropharynx, this will be in the nasopharynx. So tonsillitis, both these will block the eustachian tube. So ultimately the ventilation doesn't happen. Neither the mucus which is produced by the mucous membrane of the middle ear won't drain out properly. It starts accumulating over here. It acts as a agar for the bacteria to grow. Any allergic condition, especially the nasal allergy and tumor of the nasopharynx also blocks the eustachian tube. Now to the bacterial cause, the major bacteria which will most commonly affecting the middle ear and causing uh, this ASOM is Streptococcus hemolyticus. Second commonest is Haemophilus influenza. Next is Staphylococcus. All these are gram positive organisms, Pneumococcus. Then, last rarest possibility is Moraxella catralis. Coming to the pathogenesis and cli clinical features of ASOM, it can be divided under four stages. The stage one initially, the patient will have tubal occlusion. Whenever there is a tubal occlusion, what happens when the eustachian tube is occluded? There won't be ventilation of middle ear, neither there will be any drainage of the secretion. So it will start accumulating within the middle ear. So when you examine the patient, you can see the fluid within the middle ear via the tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane is intact, but we can see the fluid levels. So the patient complains of earache, hearing loss. Some intelligent patient will tell they have hearing loss in the first stage only. Fluid in fluid sensation in the head, they will tell that is actually in the ear they will have fluid sensation. Tympanic membrane is slightly retracted, it's pulled in 
light reflex will be absent obviously because there is a fluid inside and when you do tuning fork test the person will have conductive hearing loss you already know what is Rinne's in Weber's test Rinne's test normally air conduction should be better than bone conduction while here reverse will happen that is bone conduction will be better because conduction is blocked in Weber's test there will be lateralization of the sound towards the affected ear because bone conduction is better in stage 2 it's also called stage of pre separation meaning just before the pus formation takes place that stage in this tympanic membrane appears congested it's dark red in color inflammatory exudate starts accumulating in the middle ear the person at this stage suddenly gets high grade fever severe throbbing meaning pulsatile like earache and headache deafness restlessness of the patient tinnitus depends on whether the pus is also affecting the inner ear so it can be there may not be there in all patient uh, <clears throat> otoscopic examination shows a leash of blood vessel growing from the margin that is annulus towards the towards the handle of malleus you can see that so this appears like a cartwheel so it is called cartwheel appearance next coming to the stage 3 it is called the stage of separation Separation. The pus formation takes place here in this stage. It results in bulging of the tympanic membrane. It bulges outwards, and the pus also can leak backwards into the mastoid antrum. That is a cavity behind the middle ear. It's called mastoid antrum. The person complains of high-grade fever, severe throbbing, earache, and deafness. All these symptoms will be there, which was there in stage two. It will get worse and further. In addition, extra symptom like nausea, vomiting, convulsions may be there may not be there in all patients but it may be there otoscopic examination tympanic membrane is red in color there is a bulging yellowish spot which is seen in the tympanic membrane and it is like a nipple like protrusion it will be protruding like a nipple and if you press upon the mastoid antrum patient complains of pain that is called as tenderness it is a sign which you should elicit now to the fourth stage and the last stage sorry for the time In uh, stage 4, uh, there will be resolution, uh, it is called resolution in which the person, the tympanic membrane will rupture, which will rupture in the center and it will, uh, the secretions which are accumulated until now will drain out, will drain out. So that we can see it uh, cause one hole and there is a hyperemia, redness around that hole and pus is coming out of that. So that will be the findings actually. So the ear discharge, if you ask the patient about the ear discharge, if the patient comes at this stage, the patient tells yellowish or blood tinged ear discharge, but the earache and fever has drastically subsided because all the secretions came out now, that's why. So the child feels better at this stage. Photoscopic examination already told, there is a perforation which you can see, there is no cone of light whatsoever and the pus is draining out, which will be yellowish, some blood tinge may be there. Complications, uh, complications may occur. If at all this doesn't rupture, for some patients they may end up in complication like inflammation of the mastoid process, mastoiditis, inflammation of the inner ear, labyrinthitis, inflammation of the brain, which is called as brain encephalitis. It will collect the pus will collect in one area, it's called as brain abscess. So normally the tympanic membrane already I told you about this, so this will be a revision. There will be a handle of malleus, there will be an anterior malleolar fold, there will be a posterior malleolar fold, and when you throw a light onto this tympanic membrane since it is obliquely oriented at the anterior inferior quadrant you can see one bright reflection of light that will be called as termed as cone of light the color of the tympanic membrane normally is pearly white in color coming to the various types of tympanic membrane perforation which can happen this perforation is called central perforation and it is small. This is also central but slightly it is medium sized, it's almost like a horseshoe shape. This is called subtotal where almost 90% of the tympanic membrane is gone, eaten up by the bacteria, but remaining 10% next to the annulus or the margin is still persistent. This white color you can see here. This will be called as total perforation where the entire tympanic membrane is gone. Only the handle of malleus is like a pendulum of a clock is hanging down here. So, to coming to the treatment strategies, here comes the interesting part treatment strategies. This you will understand. Antibiotics, if you give this pus which is accumulated, will try to clear with the antibiotics, especially the penicillin group of antibiotics, amoxicillin, ampicillin, group and cephalosporins, erythromycin will be given and the infection will be cleared. If at all uh, during the course of treatment if it is not cleared, it can be facilitated by addition of nasal decongestion. What it does is the edema around the eustachian tube will be cleared so that this pus can come or 
can drain into the nasal pharynx. For some complaints of post nasal drip during this time because this pus is getting cleared through the pharynx to his throat. Then analgesics that is to relieve the pain of the patient because patient will have severe pain when the pus is accumulated. Analgesic is to relieve the pain and then antipyretics that is if they have high grade fever we have to give paracetamol and relieve the fever. Uh, analg antipyretics, analgesics for the pain. Oral toileting that is if the tympanic membrane is not yet ruptured and if that means it is intact that time we can clear whatever debris are available in the external auditory canal in order to facilitate uh, the hygiene of this area. Surgery, it's called as myringotomy. That is a surgical procedure required, rarely required in ASOM. But uh, the person whose tympanic membrane is intact, but pus is too much accumulated, it needs some way to go. So that time only will do myringotomy. So what is this myringotomy or tympanoplasty? Here the tympanic membrane will be there. There will be pus inside, but it's not able to come out because the person has got a very thick tympanic membrane. So we have to make a hole in this. Tympanic membrane. We have to cut through the tympanic membrane. So it's called tympanostomy. Please note it is not tympanectomy. It's not removal of the tympanic membrane. We're just slicing it so that it can drain it, drain the tympanic membrane. So the pus can leak out like this and the person will have drastic relief of the symptom. Thank you for watching and learning from this video. Kindly subscribe to my channel and click the bell button. Like, comment and share this video. Thank you for watching once again.